All right, it's time to put the film on for LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors. Now, I know what a lot of you think, oh, it's just because he ran his pro day today. No, actually, I pulled down these clips uh, about a week ago. I just had the chance to dive into it. Thought, ah, you know what? Neighbors is trending for a good reason. 42-inch vert, 4.3, 4.4 speed in a 40. Yeah, he put it on. Put on a show at his pro day. Let's look at him on the field. That's what matters to me. Um, this first play... Against Missouri, and I think there's a lot going on here that I really like about Neighbors, and, and one of them is just how he uses tempo to set up his routes, and this is a perfect example of that. First of all, you're going to see Mason Taylor going motion, leaving the X all by his lonesome over here, okay? So into the boundary, one-on-one. -on -one. Now, is this press? Is it press bail? Is it zone? Is it man? What are they doing? So I think what Neighbors does here is he varies up his release. He slows his release so that he can give his quarterback and Neighbors himself a read on what the defense is doing. So you'll see him kind of hesitate off the ball here when the ball is snapped. You see him kind of rise up like, oh, okay. All right. When he opens, when that corner opens, I think that's Chris Abrams' drain, I believe. When Abrams' drain opens like that, Neighbors knows, okay, he's got eyes on the safety. Safety's in the middle of the field. There's no other threat, so linebackers are kind of moved all over to the three-receiver side. So essentially, Neighbors is treating this like, you know, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. So one thing he does a great job of is he gets in a blind spot. So as Drain is bailing, he kind of loses his eyes on where Neighbors is. So Neighbors is really just going to get in that blind spot. You know, when you're driving a car, you're somebody in your blind spot. You know exactly, it's exactly what Neighbors is doing. It's like he's driving a car, he's getting in Drain's blind spot. Now, the other thing he does is he gets right up on, I mean, look how quickly he gets up on Abram's drain. Boom. Now, here's the other thing. You can see him kind of reach out, but I think he's actually bracing himself. I don't think he's reaching to push off. But watch how quickly he can stop and then work himself back and then watch Abram's drain. It's like top gun. Hit the brakes, they'll fly right on by. So he does that. Stop, boom. Hit me with that, that hitch right there at the first down marker. 10 yards, away you go. Explosiveness off, out of his release. So kind of a slow, measured release. Okay, I see what coverage it is. Now go. Now break down. Come back to the football. Big target. First down. Looks good. I mean, that is just really, really well done by Malik Neighbors. Okay, Malik Neighbors again here. Now he's going to line up in the slot. Did do some of his work in his slot. He's got inside-outside versatility. LSU loves and loved this slot fade. They would put Thomas in here. They put Lacey in here. They would put Neighbors in here. Neighbors would just get up on the toes of the DB uh, and then you know push him, get him to turn, and boom, explode to the outside. I mean, it was touchdown city. They made a killing off of slot fades. That's not what's going to happen here. This part of neighbor's game, I think maybe gives him a little bit of a leg up over Marvin Harrison Jr. and Roma Dunze. And that is the acceleration with the ball in his hands. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. So neighbors is going to come here in motion. Got a little, you know, play action. I've seen a lot of teams do this. The Texans would do this with Deshaun Watson. They would use a tight end because it looks like split zone. So the defensive end collapses, tight end just out here in the flat. So neighbors is going to come across. So they're going to use neighbors and in that role. So neighbors are going to come across. So you see a little fake there. And the neighbors just out in the flat. And it essentially becomes kind of a long toss out to neighbors. Taylor was looking to block the overhang the entire time. So neighbors is going to get this ball. Okay, top of the numbers, he gets the ball. A lot of receivers, their momentum would carry him to the bottom of the numbers. As they started to turn, they'd be on the sideline, not enough room to make a move. Neighbors is going to get vertical right now. This is the gauntlet drill at the combine, even though he didn't do anything at the combine. Catch the ball, and now go. Get upfield quickly. Now, it gets a good block from Taylor. But watch how he is pulling away from these Auburn defenders. I mean, look at these two guys trying to track him, and they just can't do it. He just runs away from them. Now, one's a defensive end, one's a safety. Uh, but the point is, Neighbors is accelerating away from those guys. I mean, look at how fast. I mean, those guys have angles. Five should have an angle. Look, he's got an angle. 
Neighbors just blows that angle up. This is just a little, Jaden Daniels, hey, flip it out in the flat and just let your guy go get it. That's 4-3 speed in a nutshell and what it looks like out on the field right there. Malik Neighbors in the end zone. Teams are going to love that. Giants, Titans, Chargers. Which one ends up with Malik Neighbors? Well, we got a little bit more. Let's take a look. All right, pure speed. Explosive plays down the field. Malik Neighbors produces those. Now, you just saw him with a catch and run explosion. Now, this is a deep down the field shot. And this is where LSU really, I think, made its money by putting Neighbors in the slot. Now, will he end up in the slot for your NFL team or whatever NFL team he ends up with? Probably some. Depends on who is around him. But he was there because of how LSU Mike Denbrock wanted to use him. And this is a great example of that. You're going to see corner matched up on the outside receiver here. Obviously, corner on the backside. So when Neighbors goes in the slot here, they're going to leave uh, a nickel on him, Malachi Moore. And yeah, I don't know if that's the best thing that could happen. And you'll see why. Neighbors knows he's got all kinds of fields here, field here to work with. So Downs is going to play down. And he's going to kind of get sucked up by a little bit of the play action here. Okay, so you see him, boom, here he comes. Now, who's in the middle of the field? Um, really, nobody. So this turns into best receiver in the SEC, arguably in the country, against the nickel safety, basically. This is easy. It's stealing. There's nobody out here. But watch neighbors get on the toes right there. Uh-oh, he's in trouble. I mean, Malachi knows right now I'm in trouble. Because right there, he can't, he's thinking, I got some help. I don't know if Downs is supposed to be that deep safety back there to help. He certainly wasn't there. Neighbors reads this on the run, and now it's easy. But watch, look at him pull away, just smoothly. I mean, this is, this is like him running away from me. Let me look how, look at that. That is just ridiculous acceleration. Good ball tracking, deep ball at night. Got to track that thing through the lights. Makes the catch, touchdown. It's one of the things you're going to do with neighbors. You're going to put him in a slot. And depending who he's with, I mean, look, what what if he ends up, he's not going to the Dolphins. What if he ended up with the Dolphins? There's Tyreek, there's Jalen Waddle, and all of a sudden he's on a safety. That's going to happen wherever he goes, depending on how offensive staffs use him. But if they're going to put him in a slot and you're going to cover him with a safety, you forget about it. You can absolutely forget about it. And this is exhibit A of why. You can forget about him. League neighbors, absolute stud. Can't wait to see him in the NFL. Just not against my team. Mm-hmm.